Am I the jerk for ignoring my friend who came on a cruise with me uninvited? I am helping to post this on behalf of my older relative who is a fan of Reddit. Am I the jerk through podcasts, but doesn't know how to post? I am an 83-year-old female who has been widowed for five years. For the past two and a half years, I have spent a lot of time with Kevin, a 79-year-old male who is also a widower. We met through friends in the same active senior community. We regularly spend time together watching sports, eating out, and going to church. About half the time it's with a group, and half the time it's just the two of us. He has expressed interest in a romantic relationship, which at this point in my life, I am not interested in. I have been unwavering in my decision to keep it platonic, but expressed that I do care for him and value his friendship. He understands, and we decided to remain close friends. We get together several times a week, never overnight, and talk or text daily. We have spent time with each other's families when they are in town and have once been on vacation together to visit my family. Friends of ours were celebrating their 50th anniversary and invited me and another female friend to join them on a cruise, which we accepted, though we all paid our own way. I mentioned this to Kevin, who has expressed his love of cruising in the past. When this was brought up, he seemed interested in joining. I emailed him the information on the cruise when he asked about it, and he ended up booking his own cabin separately. He said he really just wanted to be on a cruise while he still was able and would be happy to do his own thing while on board and see you when I see you. The original four had planned to eat meals together and drive to the port together. When he booked, we made plans to move to a five-seat table for meals. We did not include Kevin in our travel plans to the port or excursion since we already had a plan in place. Once on board, he ended up being around us all the time. He did book one of his own excursions, but other than that, he was always wanting to be with us. I was getting annoyed because he said he was going to be doing his own thing, but always seemed to want to be with me. He ended up making a comment at one time about me talking to another man, and my friend yelled at him, so he left us alone for a day. He then asked to speak to me the next day, and I said no. Some of my friends and family are saying that by telling him about the trip and sending him all the information on the cruise, that constitutes an invitation. They believe that between that and the amount of time we spend together at home, I should have anticipated he'd want to hang out with us. They think that by excluding him from our day-to-day -day hangouts and not letting him know what excursions we were doing, that was hurtful. I think that I was just giving him general information on a vacation he asked for, and he booked it himself, so I didn't have any obligation to rearrange my plans because he invited himself. Am I the antagonist? Even when groups go on holidays together, they don't have to be together 24-7. It's okay to say no to hanging out and take some nine time, so he shouldn't be offended by that. Even if he did think you invited him, which isn't the case based on what he said when booking it, that wouldn't mean you owe him your time every day. The issue here seems to be that the friend is pushing for a romantic relationship despite being told that OP isn't interested. Would I be the jerk if I keep my distance from a new family member who was once adopted? I am in a difficult situation with a family member and could really use some advice. Recently Sarah, my cousin's daughter, got in touch with me. She was adopted at birth because my cousin had her at a very young age, after being the victim of a well-known grooming scandal in our area. Given the circumstances, Sarah didn't have any contact with the family until she turned 18, two weeks ago, and reconnected with her biological mother. After reaching out to her mother, Sarah got a couple of the other family's details and added me on Facebook. She began messaging me straight away, despite us never having met before, and I was genuinely really happy she wanted to connect with her biological family. Sarah has significant intellectual disabilities and currently lives with supporting carers, though she immediately seemed to rely on me for emotional support. We've only known each other a short time, but she's already leaning on me for advice and help with things I don't feel equipped to manage. Last week she messaged me suddenly, saying her mother hates her and doesn't love her anymore. They'd had an argument about something or other and Sarah was really upset and worked up. She wanted me to get involved and sort everything out between them. The issue is, I'm not close with my cousin, her mother, at all. I only see her every few years, so I don't feel comfortable or capable of stepping into the middle of their relationship. To complicate things, my cousin, her mother, struggles significantly with her mental health, and I genuinely worry about their arguments. Both of them have complex issues, and I don't think it's appropriate for me to be involved. I tried setting some boundaries by gently suggesting that Sarah speak to her social worker, as they're better equipped to help her. However, it's clear she still expects me to step in when there are problems, and I feel really conflicted about it. I feel so bad because I know she's dealing with so much, and the fact that she has intellectual disabilities makes it even harder. I really don't want to add to her sense of rejection, and it tears me up inside to think I might hurt her. But at the same time, the constant contact and the pressure to help her with things I'm not prepared to handle have become overwhelming. I've tried suggesting other ways for her to get support, but she just isn't listening. It would be far easier to manage if she didn't have these disabilities, but I feel awful for even thinking that. Would I be the bad one if I distanced myself from her? I don't want to be cruel, but I'm genuinely unsure how to manage this. Any advice on how to approach the situation would be really appreciated. You would not be the asshole for distancing yourself in this situation. 
This young woman has a fantasy that she'll reunite with her birth family and live happily ever after, but that's not the case. It's kind to want to be a positive presence in her life, but establishing a boundary is necessary. Maybe contacting her social worker for advice on how to approach her would be a good step. Am I the jerk for taking over Mo duties when Oha Bride's sister did not? I, a 28-year-old female, grew up being best friends forever with sisters, both 28-year-old females. We were close, and they accepted me as family. In early 2023, one of the sisters announced her engagement. I was thrilled. Her sister and I already knew we would be the bridesmaids, with her sister being the maid of honor. A few months before her sister's engagement, the maid of honor and her boyfriend had a very bad breakup. After this, the maid of honor went straight back into dating. She would also act out in public where children she knew from her job saw her. She would also expect her parents to pay for everything and throw tantrums. As the wedding grew closer, I urged the maid of honor to start a plan for her sister's party. She just shrugged it off and said she would think about it. Four weeks before the wedding, nothing had been done. When I urged her again, she acted as if it was no big deal. I decided to reach out to the bride. The bride admitted to me that she knew her sister was not doing the job and was happy that I was. One week before the wedding, the maid of honor knew I was planning the party and everything else. On the day of our flight, the maid of honor started complaining about her unfair life. I snapped. I told her I was angry with her behavior towards the wedding and told her off for not stepping up. Not great timing, I admit. The next day, I mentioned I needed to go shopping for the bachelorette party items. The bride and groom were shocked when the maid of honor refused to help. Thankfully, the bride and groom stepped up and took me shopping, where I paid for everything. We were now staying at the hotel. The father of the bride paid for the room the maid of honor and I were staying in. I was prepared to pay my half of the room, but the maid of honor was not, sounding rather entitled about how her father should pay. The bachelorette was great. Everyone knew I was the one who had planned and paid for it all, making things with the maid of honor tensor. On the day of the wedding, the maid of honor was happy to be pampered but did not want to do her maid of honor duties. During the ceremony, she proceeded to speak while the celebrant was talking and during the vows. At the reception, she partied hard. Weeks after the wedding, the maid of honor told me she wanted space. 20 years of friendship, done. She decided that I was rude and negative, that I labeled her lazy, and she was hurt for not having the final say in everything. She unfriended me and blocked me on all social media. Ten months later, we have not spoken. I am still friends with my other best friend forever, happy with my actions at the wedding. I understand I went too far, and it was not my place to step in the way I did, but I stand by the fact that her lack of care towards her sister as maid of honor was ridiculous. You did the right thing. You stepped up when the moho stepped out, and as long as the bride didn't have an issue, you're good. Better that than your friend being let down by everyone. The mo needs to grow up. Am I the jerk for calling my mom heartless over a turtle? I am a 22-year-old female, a reptile lover and a happy mother to three little turtles whom I love very dearly. This morning I woke up to one of my turtles having some health complications. It was not major, but it was enough to be a cause for concern. I quickly called our nearest vet specializing in exotic pets. I had no intentions of immediately bringing her in because the situation was not an emergency, but I would naturally feel more comfortable getting input from a professional, even if over the phone. After getting off the phone, my mom called me irresponsible, saying I could not afford the vet visit. I had not even scheduled an appointment yet. I am well aware of what is in my bank account, and I know it would be enough to pay for a checkup. I would just have to sacrifice some of my fun money, which I would be willing to do. I explained this, and she continued to attempt to shut down the conversation, saying that I could not change her mind and that she did not think a turtle was worth taking to a vet. Both she and my father think that taking my animal to the vet would be irresponsible and that it would be more responsible to, in my mother's words, just let the turtle pass away if it's the time. But my turtle is still young and not anywhere near an age where this would be considered a natural death. I asked my mom if she would feel the same way about our two family dogs, and she immediately said it was not the same because my turtles are not the same as the dogs. I told her that she was being disrespectful to my relationship with my reptiles because my love for them is equal to the love she has for the dogs. I asked her to try to have empathy and understand why I might be concerned. She said that she and I are never going to see eye to eye, and that she was being respectful simply by letting the turtles live on our back porch. I have always and always will cover expenses for my animals and have never asked anyone to cover the cost for something I deem to be my responsibility. But her getting upset with me over valuing my animal's health angered me. Here is where I may be in the wrong. In the midst of the argument, I snapped and told her there must be something seriously wrong with her if she could not possibly understand what my turtles mean to me. She said that me saying that was cruel and rude. Maybe it was, but I think it was a justified statement. The thing that bothers me the most in all of this is her inability to empathize with my love for my animals. I am not asking her to love them the way I do. I am just asking her to understand that I love them. I know if one of them were to pass away, I would be devastated, and knowing how past situations have gone, I would most likely be treated like a crazy person for even properly greeting them. But I do not even want it to get to that point. Am I losing my mind here? 
You have done nothing wrong. Love is love. Whether that be your parents loving you or you loving your turtles. Just because your parents can't relate doesn't mean you're wrong for loving them. You can choose how you want to spend your money, and this should not concern her at all. Am I the jerk for spoiling my kids? I have been divorced from my ex-husband since 2018. It was about as amicable as a divorce can go. We have two children together, an 18-year-old and a 15-year-old, and we split custody 50-50. There are no alimony or child support payments on either side since we both take care of them equally. For about the past two years, he has had a live-in girlfriend, and she has children around the ages of our boys. I barely know them, but we're all cordial. I know she has one college-age child, one in high school, and one in middle school. He and I are both alcoholics in recovery. I have been clean for a few years now. Initially, I found myself with about an extra $900 a month. I have built up savings but still wanted to do things I have always wanted to do. As a part of that, I have been getting a lot of experiences for myself and my children. On my weeks we go to concerts, plays, fairs and short vacations when they are not in school. I am spending less on this than I was on alcohol, and it keeps me distracted. The children enjoy it, and attendance is not necessary. It is more of this band I like is coming to town, do you want to see them? And if yes, I take them. Recently this has been causing issues with his girlfriend's children. She has full custody of them, and they have been getting jealous of everything my children get to do on their weeks with me. I do not think it is excessive. It is not every night or even every week since I do not have them every week. We go out specifically for an event maybe twice a month, and it gets all of us out of the house. Today I took them to the state fair and came home to a huge text about how much I am spoiling them and trying to make him look bad. That is not my intent. Honestly, if I have any intent, it is trying to make up for lost time and keep myself on a better path. For clarification, none of these things has cost over $200, beyond the concert I took my child to for their 18th birthday. Those tickets were $200 each, but it was a birthday and graduation gift. I am new to this whole blended family thing. Am I the antagonist? You get to do what you want with your time and money for your kids, and you can spend as much time and money on them as you like. Just because your ex has a new relationship and stepkids doesn't mean you have to live at their income level. However, it's important that your kids aren't acting like entitled brats and aren't bragging about it to their step siblings. Congratulations on getting and staying sober. Ah, wow. Am I the jerk for not helping my locked out roommate and being petty? I, a 20 year old female, do not get along with my roommates who are between 18 and 19 years old. They tend to gang up on me and blame me for things because they are all friends and treat me as if I am unintelligent. I obviously fight back so now we all mostly ignore each other. I usually spend most of my time at my boyfriend's place. This is because I cannot stand my roommates. Sometimes if I have to collect things from my room or get a package, my boyfriend will come with me and wait. The last time this happened, my roommates, who were all home, approached him and started asking him why he was dating me. They made passive aggressive comments like, oh, you guys just don't look that good together, and I never would have guessed you two would ever date, or I can imagine you with a different type of girl, not her. One of them was being very touchy as well. Maybe I'm overreacting, but I was uncomfortable, and my boyfriend got bad vibes as well, so now he waits in the car. I was at work when one of my roommates called. I was confused because that never happens, but I answered. She told me that she lost her key and has been locked out of the house. She wanted me to let her in. I explained to her that I was at work, and she suggested I hand the key over to my boyfriend and have him open the door for her. I said sorry and told her to ask someone else. She said everyone else was busy. I said I was too. She said, I bet your boyfriend isn't. And I responded, well, he is. Ask one of your friends instead of bothering me, then I hung up. Apparently she was locked out until 10 p.m. No. I didn't check up on her because I didn't care. When I went back home the next day, that roommate and another were annoyed with me. They said they couldn't believe I'd let a young girl stay out all night and that I need to put my ego aside for things like this. They also accused me of not trusting my boyfriend, being insecure, and having an unstable relationship. I told them that there were five other girls, and two of them have boyfriends too. She could have asked them, especially since they're all such good friends. But she changed the topic back to me wanting her to stay out all night and possibly get hurt. Which is ridiculous, I genuinely don't care. I told her to get over herself and that she could have waited at a cafe, a library, or the school, all within 5 minutes away and open until 11pm, instead of trying to make a scene and wait outside for 5 hours, just because my boyfriend wouldn't come open the door for her. She then asked if I even asked him, but I just left because, what? My other roommates think I'm horrible, more than before, and that I'm petty and not a girl's girl, I didn't respond to their messages. I have to stay at my house for 2 days straight next week, so I'm just wondering if maybe I am the antagonist here. If so, I will apologize, otherwise I can deal with their behavior. Am I the antagonist? If it matters my boyfriend was, in fact, busy but said he wasn't going to go either way. You are not the cause of this issue. Funny how none of her good friends would help her out in her time of need. Maybe next time she'll call someone who cares. Also, please find a different living situation soon. Those roommates sound like a never-ending headache. Thanks for watching.
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.